Welcome to 1.3, uh, midpoint and distance formulas. So this shouldn't be too bad. This is pretty quick, right? There's just two main formulas, this uh, midpoint formula and this distance formula. It might look like gobbledygook to you, but if you can understand the way it's put together, then everything else will flow. And also you're willing to go nice and slow and careful then everything else will flow along. So hang with me here. Objective, I can find the lengths of segments in the coordinate plane. And so let's turn that into an essential question. And you've already done that, I hope. And so write out in your on your paper, uh, how do I find lengths of segments in the coordinate plane? So a midpoint of a segment is the point, you know this, that divides the segment into two Congruent. Hey, that is a a new term uh, for us. Congruent. What what do what does the term congruent means? It means uh, same shape. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. Let's write that in there. Same shape and same size. That's what congruent means. Same shape and same size. We'll see that word over and over again. I think we learned that in uh, section 1.2. So a midpoint cuts the thing into uh, two shapes that are the same shape and same size. A segment bisector is a point or a ray or a line or a line segment or a plane or it could be my pin uh, that intersects the segment at its midpoint. Okay, so bi, like a bicycle, that's two, that's the prefix there. And then sector comes from the Latin for to cut. So a bisector cuts the original thing into two pieces. And in, uh, as it's used in geometry, it is two congruent pieces or segments. So here's an example over here. You got this from your book that you see we have segment uh, AB, this entire thing here, and then capital M is the letter that we use typically for uh, the midpoint. And notice that there's two tick marks here. So please do uh, write in your notes that these are congruent markings. Oftentimes they're in red. Yeah, here they are. In your uh, textbook here, you'll see that they're in a light red. So those are congruent markings saying that segment AM is congruent with segment MB. Or another way of saying it, or what that means is that uh, the length of AM is equal to the length of MB. And you have that written there in your notes. <clears throat> so M is the midpoint of segment AB. So therefore, segment AM, so this is a shape, segment AM, is, and look at that, that's a equal sign with a squiggly on top of it. What does that mean? It means uh, that's the congruence symbol. So segment AM is congruent to segment MB. So please write in your notes, shapes are congruent. If you can get that principle, that's gonna help you a whole lot here in geometry. Shapes are congruent, and that's a, a congruence marking. Look over here though, it says AM. Hey, isn't that the same thing? No, it isn't. Uh, before we had AM with a bar on top of it. That's a shape segment AM. So what is AM without a bar on it? Well, that's the length of, remember that from section 1.2, uh, I think it was? When it just has AM, it's referring to the length of segment AM. And that's a number, right? The length of a, um, a segment would be like five inches or something like that. Remember that length cannot be a negative number. It's always positive number. So the length of AM equals the length of MB. So shapes are congruent. That's why I have these congruent marks or congruent symbol there. But numbers are equal. So really important, whenever you use a congruent symbol, make sure that those are uh, shapes. And whenever you use the equal symbol, make sure that those are numbers. And if you do that, again, that'll save you a whole lot of trouble. And then here's a similar, in fact, it's the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Essentially the same thing as we have uh, from up here. They brought it down here, but now they gave us this line 
which we can call line DC or line DM or line MC. Remember, it does not matter. The, uh, you only need two points to define a line. And it does not matter which ones they are or what order they're in. And, but this line is a segment bisector. So that's what we mean by a segment bisector. It's a something that comes in, in this case it's a line, that comes in and bisects this segment. It cuts this segment into two congruent parts. Okay, so it is bisecting that segment. <clears throat> Okay, I think we are ready. Well, no, let me do this example for you. Example number one in your book. Got this cool looking skateboard. Tells us that segment W or VW, here's a segment. It bisects this other longer segment. And in fact, they even on the diagram, you can notice here that they give us the two congruent marks. It tells us that uh, uh, XT is congruent to TY. And also the length of XT is equal to then the length of TY. And they're telling us that XT, now notice again, see there's no bar on top of it. So that's referring to the length of XT. Now the length of XT is equal to 39.9. So from here to here, that guy is 39.9. And they want us to find XY. In other words, the length of segment XY. Hmm. So I want to find the whole thing. This is a uh, this is a bisector. Hey, so therefore this point T is what uh, in reference to the segment. It is a midpoint because the bisector goes through the midpoint. So if this is a midpoint, then like we have marked here, then this bottom segment is congruent to the top segment. The two segments are equal length. If the bottom one is 39.9, then the top one must be 39.9. And so to find the length of the entire thing, what do we do? Duh. We just say 39.9 plus 39.9. Add them together and we get uh, 79.8. That makes sense, doesn't it? Sure enough. Let me give you this, uh, walk you through this other example, number two here. They tell us that uh, point M is the midpoint. So if I was to draw a line through that midpoint, what would that line be called? That line would be called a segment bisector. And it's a midpoint, this is a point is a midpoint of segment VW. They want us to find the length of VM. So just this left length here. And remember, yeah, all this part here, the length of VM, they could have just wrote VM. Because we know that now, it means this whole thing, uh, the length of uh, VM. So how do we do that? Well, we know that since this is the midpoint, therefore this left segment is congruent to the right segment. Because they're congruent, therefore their lengths are equal, and therefore we can take this 4x minus 1 and set it equal to the 3x plus 3. So we're taking the two lengths, we're setting them equal to each other, and now we're doing some algebra. See, I told you we'd do algebra in geometry, but you guys know how to do this now, and if you don't, what should you do? Go to Khan Academy. Yeah, type in, uh, this is uh, like a uh, two-step equation. So type in two-step equation into Khan Academy and it'll tell you how to do this type of a problem. But you probably remember that, uh, let's bring the x's over to one side, and this is more than two-step equation, but uh, uh, bring the three x over to both the left side by subtracting three x on both sides. So four x minus three x will give us x. And then let's bring the one over to the right side. And uh, we do that by adding one to both sides. So I guess it is a two-step equation in this case. And uh, so adding one to both sides, three plus one gives us four. So x equals four. Woohoo! Is that the answer? I'm feeling good about it. Yes, x does equal to four, but that's not the answer. Let's go back to the question. What were they asking us for? They said, uh, find Vm. Oh, that's right. I don't want to know x, I want to know vm. So I know that x is 4, all I have to do is plug in x into this uh, expression. Remember this is an expression, not an equation. This guy here is an equation, because it has an equal sign. But here, that's just an expression, because there's no equal sign. So let's plug x 
uh, plugs 4 into <coughs> our expression and we get 4 times 4 minus 1 which is 15 and they're telling us here we could check that since we know this is a midpoint these two segments are congruent this dude ought to be the same length so let's plug in 4 x equals 4 into here 3 times 4 is 12 12 plus 3 is 15 it matches what do you know the math works and now it's time for you to work <laughs> that was a nice segue huh uh, so notice out of your book here guided practice I put those put those up here into your uh, notes and it's your turn to do this I did not give you much room did I nope didn't give you much room at all because I'm trying to squeeze a lot into this one uh, page but notice that they ask you first to identify the segment bisector of segment PQ and then to find PQ, which you know is the length of segment PQ. So write in your notes, segment bisector is, and then you fill in the answer. So what is the segment bisector of segment PQ? You write that in, and then you tell me what the uh, what PQ is. What is the length of this entire segment? And write that like PQ. Now, would you put equals or would you put congruent symbol? And the answer is equal because PQ is a number. The length of PQ is a number. And then do a similar thing for uh, number two, where you write segment bisector is and tell me what the segment bisector of this segment is. And then let me give you a little hint and a place to do your work. Uh, remember here's your two congruent marks so 5x minus 7 is the length of the left segment and x or 11 minus 2x is the length of the right segment so what do you do with those two expressions so I put those two expressions here I gave you the answer but then I whited it out because <laughs> I didn't want to give you too much you got to do a little bit of work on your own so here's your two expressions uh, what's the relationship what is the relationship between those two expressions and then solve for x and then is x your answer it's not uh, so what do you have to do with that x once you find it and again go back to your notes go back to your, your book and it'll give you a, a problem very similar to it so this ought to be a piece of cake for you now go ahead and pause the video and uh, do those two problems on your own Okay, we're ready for midpoint formula. Midpoint formula. And so I took what's here in your book and put it here into your notes. And yeah, okay, here we go. So uh, remember I've said in class, uh, with the honors class I did, I'm not sure if I said it with a regular class. I'm not sure if we got there. Pretty sure we did not. But when you see midpoint, think of average. Think of average. And the reason for that is because let's do it this way if this entire thing was 10 let's say this entire thing was 10 where would be the the midpoint well you just uh, take 10 and divide it by 2 and that's 5 okay well uh, think of this as starting at 0 and this ending at uh, 10 so you take 0 plus 10 which is 10 divide it by 2 you're finding the average of 0 and 10 but when it is off of the zero, and so x1 is actually a number, and, uh, and then x2 is actually a number, you still do the same thing. You add the two together. So if it would be slid over here where x1 is zero and uh, x2 is a number, you would just say zero plus that number. But now when it's not on zero, you say x1 plus x2 and divide it by two. Uh, and, and when it's a diagonal like this, uh, you just look at the x-coordinate first. Only look at your x-coordinate. You want to add your x-coordinates and divide it by 2, and that will give you uh, the x-coordinate of the midpoint. And then you ignore the x and just look at the y. So here's your, your y-coordinates, y1 and y2. Add those y-coordinates and divide it by 2, and that will give you the uh, y coordinate of the midpoint. So let me show you an example of that. Uh, here in example three in your textbook and they even have colors, that's helpful. 
So I, I wish they would have though uh, put m equals x1 plus x2 divided by 2 and then big fat comma. Oh, and then your, um, and your notes. Can you make sure and do that? Can you put a big uh, capital letter M here and then equals and then make those parentheses big and fat parentheses and then make that uh, apostrophe. Is that an apostrophe? No, comma. What am I saying? Uh, put that comma uh, nice and big there. So you remember in this formula that this formula is the X coordinate comma and then the Y coordinate of the midpoint. And so um, I wish they would have put that up here to just, to, just to remind us of what we're doing. Okay, but uh, x1, let's see, let's call this point down here, uh, point one. If so, then this would be x1 and this would be y1, the x coordinate of point one and the y coordinate of point one. And then let's call this point two and this would be uh, x2 and y2. So do not write in your book, but I'm just doing it for educational purposes and I will erase this after I'm done. So now all, all that I do is plug these numbers into the formula. So I'm taking x1 and x2. So x1 is 1, got a nice color blue there. And x2 is 4, and then divide it by, add them together and divide by 2 and do the same thing with the, the y coordinates. Okay, be really careful with the negatives. And like here, it's okay what we did, but if you do, if you switch it around, if you had like a two and then plus negative three, make sure that you have a parentheses around that uh, negative. Do not lose track of your uh, negatives. Okay, so if you do the math in this case, then your, here's your, what your midpoints will be. Now let me explain really quickly. I don't have an example. Well, I'll tell you what, what I would recommend doing right now is pausing uh, the video and then do um, exercise number three, problem number three that you have in your notes. Now that I've gone through that, I know I'm going quick. Uh, you can, again, Khan Academy will explain to you how to do this more thoroughly. But uh, what I recommend doing for number three is uh, write number one. Okay, this is point number one. You could label this as point number one, uh, B. That's point one number one if you, if you wanted to. But let's do uh, point A as point one. If this is point one, then this is X1. So write X1 above it. And then this is Y1. Right? This is the X coordinate of point one. That's what X sub one means. X coordinate point one. And this is the Y coordinate of point one. And over here, Label this as x2 and uh, y2. And then write out your formula. Well, you know what? There's not much room on here. So, and you have it sitting right there in front of you. Uh, I'm going to have you in class write out the formula a number of times. So for now, I'll let you slide and uh, put 1 in for x1. So you'd just say 1 plus an x2 over here is 7. 1 plus 7 and then divided by 2. And then big old fat comma and then you do the rest got it now I'll tell you what for this where you have they they give you an endpoint and also the midpoint and then you have to find the endpoint let me what should I do let me explain that to you in class okay um, 